If you occasionally feel like you are not good enough, I don't blame you. The world defaults to making us feel like we are some kind of not good enough. Everywhere we turn, we are reminded of some way we are falling short. If you go to a beauty store, you will find a product for every single thing you might feel insecure about and might want to change about yourself. You know the lines near my mouth? The other day I learned that it is a sign that I am aging early, and there is a slightly non-invasive procedure that can fix it. The default of the world is to make you feel like you constantly need to improve and change something about yourself. So, if you sometimes feel like you're too much or not enough, I don't blame you. If you're new here, hi, my name is Joy, and I want to say that I had a pretty good childhood growing up. I love dressing up, wearing pink, and buying cute things for as long as I can remember. I was the girliest of girls, and honestly to this day, I still kind of am. But the girliest thing about me was probably my taste and my attire because my interest and my personality was anything but what you might consider conventionally feminine. I loved competing, I loved math, I loved soccer, I loved debating, and I also wasn't the type who would hold my thoughts quietly. Growing up, I was very lucky to be blissfully unaware of society's expectations or the idea that I needed to fit into a certain mold. And then I went to college and pretty much that changed overnight. Suddenly expectations, whether it is about how you are supposed to look or what you're supposed to do with your life, became ever so pronounced. College was the first time where I seriously struggled with my identity. I studied statistics in college, and I had to take a lot of math and programming courses. And if you visualize the average STEM student, you probably won't imagine them carrying a pink backpack. I stopped dressing up the way I liked, and I intentionally put less effort in how I showed up in the day-to-day because I was worried people might think that I wasn't serious about school. When I was around other girls in college, while I could bond over the initial conversations, there was a period when I struggled to fit in beyond that. It felt like I was too strong-willed, too outspoken, and too blunt, and we just didn't have a lot of common overlapping interests. I actively changed parts of myself in order to fit in more. I wanted to fit into the mold of what a typical 20-something Chinese-Indonesian girl was like. Needless to say that it didn't last too long and I just ended up feeling very bad about myself. Both too much and not enough, the struggle to fit into either worlds, the weight of being a girl, the weight of being human, it felt all the more pronounced as I got older. Society loves to place us in boxes and make assumptions, where if you were a girl and you had grand aspirations for your career, it meant that you don't care about having a family. Or if you had big goals in general, it meant that you were cruel and difficult and cold. Or if you had a pink backpack and red nails, you lack grit and you simply just do not have what it takes. All these boxes, all the things people keep telling you what you should do and shouldn't do, it's kind of exhausting. In my early 20s, I want to say that I didn't know myself very well, or at least I wasn't as confident or comfortable with myself. So I listened to what a lot of people had to say, a lot of what people told me I should and shouldn't do. I ingested their truths as my own, felt the need to even dull parts of myself, my personality, in order to fit in more. That made me hold back from dressing up the way I wanted to, talking about the things that made me happy and excited, or putting off things that I genuinely wanted to pursue and instead do things that were quote-unquote more normal. I first felt the urge to make a YouTube video when I was 21, but I kept putting it off until I was 25. Mostly because I feared being judged, but I also wondered what it would say about me. Someone who spent her whole life studying something incredibly technical. Did it mean I wasn't serious about the things I have been pursuing my whole life? I spent so much time being unhappy and unfulfilled, 
and for a long time I thought it was caused by the fear of being judged by others and not fitting into the exact mold that was expected of me, but the truth was, I was unhappy because I was also judging myself. I was judging myself for being different, for wanting different things, and when I realized I was responsible for my own unhappiness, when I learned to finally give myself grace, it became much easier to develop the confidence needed and to ignore what a lot of people had to say, because what they said did not matter for as long as I did not subconsciously agree with them. I would say that today those boxes still very much exist, although they are in a slightly different format. Now I'm consistently told that I need to shave off my ambition so I don't scare off men, or that I need to stop wearing color so I would look more my age, or that I need to be the carbon copy of Alexander Wang, where I have to wake up every day at 5 a.m., run two hours in order to succeed at startups. That I need to do this, do that. But I think what distinguishes now and my early 20s is I've stopped caring as much because I spent so much of my time caring about what people had to say, what I should and should not do in order to fit in more, but caring was actually exhausting. Caring about someone else's opinion, especially those who didn't really care about me, did not make me happy, did not get me anywhere. In fact, it made me miserable and it made me feel so lost. Okay, I will tell you what I wish someone told me when I was in my early 20s. That it is okay to be yourself, it is okay to be who you are, just because you don't fit into the precise mold of what you're supposed to be doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. Your job in life is to be yourself, to really just disappoint as many people as it takes before disappointing yourself. The only way you can truly disappoint yourself is only when you are dishonest with yourself. Everything that made me different, the fact that I am a girly girl who loves to talk about her feelings but also loves technical problems, all these contradictions are what make me who I am. The conflicting lives that live inside of me, they are what makes me special. If you had to shave off aspects of yourself or your personality in order to fit in, it simply means that you're not surrounded by the right people. It is not your job to make someone love you, appreciate you, or choose you. Their inability to see your worth or to value you is in no way a reflection of you, but rather it only means that they are not right for you. It is also okay to want to be a better version of yourself. But I think the issue with self-improvement is when that desire to improve is motivated by that desire to fit in. It feels really different when you're doing it for yourself versus for other people or for other people's perception. I was never gonna be that girl who fit into like what's expected of me as a 20-something Chinese Indonesian girl. That's just not who I am. And now I know that's completely okay. Nothing wrong with fitting into that mold, but it just so happens that I cannot and I will never fit into that mold. And that's okay. Nowadays, I am really happy and confident and just feel really good about the person I have become, despite the fact nothing in my life is going objectively right. Now, I'm at a point in life where I will never let anyone tell me that I cannot do something. But I was once a girl who let her boyfriend tell her that she was too much for talking about her feelings or that starting a YouTube channel was a stupid idea. For so long, I dulled my personality, but no more. It took me a long time to realize that my dream to one day raise a series A and do all these things while writing in my journal, making videos, and maintaining a lovely Miffy collection instead of rock climbing or hiking on weekends or going on a keto diet was precisely what made me special because there's no one else like me in this world. In a world that's constantly telling you to do this and do that, resisting, remaining unchanged, being yourself, accepting yourself for who you are, is the hardest thing you can do. But in a world where tomorrow is not really promised, and all we have is right now, this very moment, it feels like the only thing you can really do. 